Hello and welcome. I have a dust problem in my shop, and I'm guessing that most who work with wood have had the same problem to one degree or another. My main problems are portability and filtration. The shop vac, as it sits now, is somewhat cumbersome to move around. But what shop vac isn't? And I would like to add a dust cyclone to my setup to help save the filter. But adding that will only make the shop vac setup more difficult to move around. The solution to my problem is a cart to hold it all together and allow it to move more freely around the shop. This should help reduce the dust level in the barn. The design I came up with is of course quite specific to my shop vac, but I think it would be pretty easy to adjust the measurements to suit your needs. I wanted to use some higher grade wood for this project. So I went out and bought a 5x5 sheet of 3 quarter inch Baltic birch. This sheet of Baltic birch is enough to do the dust collection cart and the project I am working on next. I'll use what's left after this project to build a drill docking and charging station. Now that I have my materials for the build, I need to think about what I need out of a dust collection cart. I'd like the cart to be lightweight so it'll be easier to maneuver around the shop, or it won't end up getting used very much. By making the cart tall, you're also making it more likely to tip over. The cart would need to be stable, or I'll end up tipping over all the time, and then it'll sit in the corner and not get used. The wood was the big spend on this one, and the rest will have to be low cost. I do have most of what I need to make the cart already, so there's not much left to buy. I do need a small cyclone and a bucket. I may also get another hose. The one that's included with my shop vac has very little flex to it, so moving it in and out of tight spaces can occasionally prove difficult. I took my requirements to SketchUp, and I ended up with this. The vacuum will sit in the bottom, and the bucket and cyclone will sit on the top. I found this mini two-stage cyclone separator. I think this one will work well. It keeps the cart from getting too tall. I'm not sure if it is as efficient as the more standard V-shaped dust cyclones that you can buy, but I don't imagine it'll make much difference to me. Everything is an upgrade from my current setup. I made the base a little wider than the rest to help with stability. If I put the casters further out, then it should tend to tip less. I also rounded the corners on the base so they're less likely to catch on things when moving it around. And they're also not going to hurt as much when you bash your ankle on them. I left two of the sides as open as I could so there's no real front or back. You can access the shop vac from both sides to take it out and clean it, or to reach the power switch. With the design done, I moved to the shop to start work on the dust collection cart. The 5x5 sheet was too much to manage on my table saw set up by myself, so I had to use what I could. I have a 48 inch clamp edge saw guide. That's a bit shorter than the 5 foot board, but with some creative clamping, I made it work. Just to be sure though, I made the cut about a quarter inch wider than the 16 and 3 quarter inches that I need for the first of the side pieces, and then I'll trim it down on the table saw. I'm trying to remember to use the shop vac as I go so I don't end up with as much dust on the floor. Without the cart, it's an awkward setup to move it from place to place. Once I had made the first cut, it was much easier to handle the plywood sheet. Just before the second cut was made, I learned that the wiring in my barn needs to improve. I do plan to address the wiring issues at some point, but I didn't realize that all the electrical sockets in the barn are on the same breaker. And running the table saw, the shop vac, the softbox lighting, the extra fridge, and the deep freezer that we have in the barn, all on the same circuit, was a bit much, and I tripped the breaker before I could finish the cut. At the same time, I noticed that my outfeed table was a little lower than it should be. So I fixed that, reset the breaker, then finished the cut. With both the sides cut, I used the edge of a paint can to mark for rounding the corners. Got out the jigsaw and started cutting. Once cut, I gave the corners a basic sanding just to get the shape down. In one of the sides, I cut a hole that's slightly larger than the shop vac hose. To keep the cart a little smaller, I'm running the hose through one of the sides. Eventually, I may decide to replace that portion of hose with PVC piping, but for now, this'll do. Next, I cut the three inch cross pieces for the top and the four inch cross pieces for the bottom supports. Here 
Each of these cross pieces will attach to the sides with pocket holes. I had to reset the pocket hole jig to work with the 3 quarter inch plywood. The last time I used it was for 2x4s, so remember to check your settings and use a test piece before drilling into your good stock. I just bought a new pocket hole clamp, and it's a very handy thing to have. I stood one of the sideboards on its edge and clamped the 4 inch bottom cross piece to it. Made sure it was all lined up and square, and then put in the screws. And I repeated the process with the other side, and ended up with a square. This is more or less square at this point, and I'll dial in that a little more when I add the two top cross pieces, and the top surface where the bucket will sit. To get ready for that, I mark out a circle. I didn't want my bucket to sit in too deep, so I made the hole just slightly larger than the bottom of the bucket. If you want your bucket to sit deeper, then you can cut the hole just a little bigger. I drill the hole to get started cutting the circle with the jigsaw. I always find it challenging to get a good circle with a jigsaw, and I don't have a spindle sander or anything else that can sand away any wood that I missed with the jigsaw. So I try to keep close to the line. I tried to get away with not drilling a second hole once I had turned the piece around, but as you can see that did not work. I didn't end up needing to sand off much material after the jigsaw, but there was some to remove. So off camera I grabbed a small chunk of wood and sandpaper and spent a little time sanding it to fit. I'm going to have to look into getting a decent spindle sander, or something multi-purpose. Let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions. The top piece, with the hole cut in it, will end up attaching to the cross pieces with pocket holes. I'm really starting to use the pocket hole jig a lot. I know it's not meant for every project, but I'm having fun with it. Connecting the top to the 3 inch cross pieces was challenging. Keeping it all together with the clamps that I had was a little unstable, so I had to fight with it a bit. But in the end, I think I got it square enough for this project. Even though this is just a shop cart, I still want it to look as good as possible. Now I want to attach the top piece to the rest of the frame. I put some clamps at my chosen height and set it in place. I got it all square and true and then attached it to the sides. At this point it was easier to put the frame on the ground and work from there. And while it was on the ground, I did some sanding as well. I'll do a lot more sanding later, but for now it's time to work on the bottom. I used that same paint can for the corners of the bottom. After marking, I cut them out and do a little bit of sanding. I made sure to turn this piece upside down so that any splintering from the jigsaw will end up under the cart where it won't be seen. And there was quite a lot of splintering on this one. You could put masking tape on it, then do your marks and cut it out and get less splintering if you're concerned about it being seen. But again, mine's underneath so I wasn't too worried about it. Now I flip the cart upside down on the ground. I put some rags on the ground so the rough concrete doesn't mark up the top of the cart. Now I set the bottom in place and get it centered so I can attach it to the main body of the cart. Once I have it where I want it, I mark where the screws will go, pre-drill and countersink some holes, and then add the screws. The bottom is attached and most of the work is done. My next step is to add the casters. I did have a mismatched set of casters left over from other projects. And since both sets were 2 inch casters, I thought it'd be fine to use them for this project. What I didn't realize is that the 2 inch measurement refers to the wheels, and not the overall height of the caster. And it turns out that the mismatch set I have are not equal heights. So after attaching these to the bottom of my new cart, I flipped it over and it rocked back and forth a lot. That was disappointing. So I called it a night, went up to the house, and ordered some new casters four of them, all the same height. And these are the ones I ordered. All four are locking and they come with hardware and their own screwdriver as well. When attaching these, I tried to use the same holes that I had used for the previous casters. Most of them lined up, but not all of them. So I pre-drilled some more holes and attached the new casters. It's a good thing this part's not going to be visible. I also added a power bar on one of the top cross pieces. I think it would be convenient to have a place to plug things in that's near me at all times. The cart should technically be right beside me almost all of the time, 
The cyclone that I have is constantly being pulled off the top of the bucket by the stiff shop vac hose. So I added some small hooks on the top so that I can run a bungee cord over the top to hold it all down. The shop vac hose extensions and some of the various other attachments fit on the vacuum itself and the rest sit in the shelf area around the bucket. I think this project has turned out really well and eventually I do plan to add some stuff on the sides. I want to use this a bit first though to see what makes the most sense to attach to the sides of the dust collection cart. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.